basking in the late afternoon January sun. This is my Angraecum leonis in the viewfinder and in beautiful sunshine. And maybe that is one of the reasons I've got bud blast this time around. And that is what I'm going to be discussing today. Thank you for your interest. Thank you, Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents, for your interest in a follow-up on my Orchid Lingo Bud Blast video, where I didn't want to extend the video to get so long, but I had another example of Angraecum leonis Bud Blast, which I mentioned in that video. And I wanted to do the same analysis for this one. Didn't include it, but Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents said she wanted to have that follow-up so that we can see using the list from that Bud Blast video and analyze and Graham Leonis and see what went wrong this time, which I also find super interesting and I'm glad I can do this video because this is the second year in a row now that my Angraecum Leonis has blasted its bud. It's the first year that I got two spikes, so there's that, but no blooms second year in a row. So I have my analysis of what I thought went wrong in 2020 change that up in 2021 and we have the result that you see today. So let me go through point by point. Speaking of overwatering or underwatering, I can rule this point out straight away because my leaves are plump. There is no sign of wrinkling at all. And maybe you can see in the back here, some of my roots have stopped growing, but that is because of climatic changes, the cycle of the orchid, and right here, there's a root tip, and that is mechanical damage. But all the other roots are looking fine, and the velamen is beautiful, white, and plump. So, overwatering and underwatering, we can rule that out, no problem. The orchid is doing great in that aspect. I really have to take improper lighting into consideration two years in a row, for that matter. This orchid in the summer gets so much light even though no direct sun, but it lives on the east side of my patio where the whole facade from two angles reflects white. It is behind a white curtain. There's eight to nine hours of indirect sun per day that this orchid is confronted with. That is a lot of light and she spikes just about that time period when it comes to me bringing the orchid indoors. That is when the light levels drop considerably, even though she lives right by the shelf that faces my terrace door, which is west facing. The angle of the sun is much lower in the sky. She will get maybe an hour of sunlight, direct sun on her during these months. So inadequate light for the buds to bloom out, I really have to take that into consideration. Having had her on a much lower shelf in 2020 when she was in bud and she blasted, that little lower shelf also gets direct sun. Maybe a little bit longer, but not by much. But this time I moved her up to the middle shelf so that her light influence is a little bit higher based on her location, even though no direct sun for an extended period of time. So I do have to take improper lighting into consideration. I also have to take temperature fluctuations into consideration. This year we went from gorgeous, gorgeous heat, perfect Indian summer. I thought this is going to be great. And then all of a sudden in November, the temperatures dropped so radically that I need to take that into consideration as well. Despite all my efforts to match indoor-outdoor temperatures before I open the terrace door. So whatever I feel in my ambient surroundings may not have been ideal for this orchid when she was starting to push the buds. Humidity highs and lows. Now, not really. I don't think that humidity had anything to do with this orchid bud blasting. You can see the incredible amount of moss that has grown around her naturally. She has that little saucer at the bottom that is filled with water, also increasing her ambient humidity. I had a lot of humidity starting November, December, which was a bit crazy, but that doesn't change the fact that in the summer, even though I don't have a lot of humidity to speak of, her little microclimate stays pretty consistent even during the hottest months of the year because of her setup and because of where she lives way down in a shelf above a terracotta floor that gets watered regularly to keep the humidity levels up around that shelf. So I can eliminate 
humidity on this one. Now, if anything I say in my list is wrong and you say, uh, hold it right there, write that in the comments below because I can be completely mistaken with regards to the humidity. But from my analysis throughout 2020, 2021, humidity fluctuations, the lack thereof or too much has not been an issue for this orchid. I do have to take pollutants into consideration as well though because again I was occasionally heating that area where I work at with a gas heater so yeah the ethylene gas I do have to take that into consideration that that had an effect on this bud blast. Pests I can eliminate I don't have any pests on this orchid yippee thankfully because the little crevices and the tight growths on her wow that would be a nuisance to try to eradicate but no pests. So we come to the first time bloomer aspect. Now this is a yes and no analysis. First time bloomer for me would be an orchid where I see the blooms for the first time. This orchid does it fall under first time bloomer category because it has tried to spike last year. It's tried again this year. Is that still a first time bloomer? I'm not really sure the jury is a little bit out on that one because if I hadn't made mistakes, this orchid would already be on her second bloom cycle in my care. So I'm a little bit iffy about the fact that maybe first time bloomer has anything to do with this. I, I doubt it. I think there are other mistakes happening. Nutrient deficiency, I do have to take that into consideration. Maybe there's not enough calcium in her. Maybe there's a need for a little bit more magnesium. I'm seeing a few blotches right here. Mm, yeah, I'm going to include nutrient deficiency for next year because my habit is to reduce any kind of fertilizer that I used to apply during the growing months. When it gets colder, I cut that down to half. So I have to take that into equation. Maybe while she's pushing the spikes, just keep up with the same nutrient levels seeing as she is doing something. So on the point of location, the moving from one location to the next causing bud blast, I'm going to rule that one out because she moves into the grow space when her spikes are just forming. There is no bud developing on those spikes when I move her. The bud develops when she's already in the location for the winter months. So I'm going to rule out location because it wasn't like the spikes started to abort. The spikes progressed beautifully and then the bud started and well, the rest is history. Even the second spike here where the bud should be, that is all a little bit shabby looking. That's not going to amount to anything. So I'm going to rule out location. Drafts. Oh, yes definitely one that I am going to put back into my list for analyzing a possible successful blooming next time around, whenever that should be the case. Rafts, of course. She is in the line of fire of when I open that door. So apart from moving her from one location of 2020 where I thought drafts would be an issue down there on that lower shelf, I moved her up a little bit higher. The angle was pretty much the same, but in the opposite direction. So, yep, epic fail if drafts is also one of the issues. And finally on the list, not on the list, but as a bonus thing regards to bud blast, I also added if an orchid doesn't have enough structures that it's trying and that it's practicing. Well, I'm going to be ruling not enough structures out because this orchid is growing really, really well has progressed beautifully over the last two years and yet I do have bud blast. So that is not the problem I believe with this orchid this time around. So have my work cut out for me for the coming year. I'm glad my orchid is healthy. and I'm relieved that she is free of pests, that we don't have that problem to consider. But yeah, that is how I analyze what went wrong this year with regards to bud blast on my Angraecum leonis. And I hope that if you're watching this video after having watched my Bud Blast video, a quick recap of the list and how I go through it with my thought process from what did I do, when did I do it, what was the temperature, etc. All these factors, a little checklist like that also helps you in your analysis of what went wrong and hopefully get it right the next time around. And thank you once again, Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents for asking that I do do this video so that we can have a look-see once again and do some analyzing. Now we need to grow that beautiful leaf on in the center, wait for warmer temperatures, put her back down on the east side, and then 
hope for better results. Maybe three times a charm. Who knows? All I can say is watch this space. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much for watching. I do wish you a beautiful, beautiful day. As always, on one condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.